Today, let's talk about the possibility of commercialization of OLED TVs with monster-like performance that can be fully implemented with current technology but have not yet been commercialized due to price problems. In conclusion, a brighter screen can be realized compared to the existing OLED, and a TV can be manufactured that can greatly improve burn-in, a chronic problem of OLED TV. However, there remains only the disadvantage that the panel production process is longer than the white OLED TV or QD OLED TV currently produced, and thus the production cost is inevitably increased. Let's start the tech trip. In the display, three sub-pixels of red-green-blue form one pixel and adjust their relative brightness to realize almost infinite color. The same is true for OLEDs used in mobile phones. Unlike LED made of inorganic materials, it is a device that emits light by injecting electrons through an electrode into an organic material made up of about seven layers of ultra-thin film that has different molecular structures depending on its role. And each element that emits red, green, blue is different from each other in the type of material used and the thickness in the element to obtain an optimized high efficiency element. Each of the red, green, blue subpixels also has a different area. The reason is that by increasing the relative area of a subpixel with a relatively short lifespan compared to other subpixels, the current density injected per unit area is reduced, and thus the lifespan can be extended. This is an enlarged picture of iPhone X using Samsung Display's OLED panel. It can be seen that the subpixels have different widths, and in particular, the blue subpixel area is relatively large. Since the lifespan of the blue light emitting material is relatively short, it compensates for the short lifespan by making the area wider than other colors. However, if the size of blue is continuously increased, the size of the pixel increases and the resolution is reduced. If the relative width of green and red is increased, the current density injected into green and red increases too much. This diminishing adverse effect occurs. A typical way to solve this is to fabricate a multi-stack device or a tandem device. This is a very important concept, so let me give you an analogy to help you understand. Here are three houses located in a small area on a high ground. However, each house is in a very cramped condition because there are many big people living in it. Assume that the land is not large enough to expand even if a new house is built. In particular, the house with blue roof has relatively more people living in them, which makes the situation even more inconvenient. A way to alleviate this environment even a little is to widen the house with a blue roof, where a relatively large number of people reside, and reduce the size of the house with a red and green roof by that much. Of course, people who lived in houses with green and red roofs would complain more. However, if the construction cost is not taken into consideration, there is a way to satisfy everyone. Building a two- or three-story house. Although the site area is the same, if it is vertically extended and built in a multi-story structure, everyone can live in two or three times the area. This concept is the stacking technology of OLED called stack structure or tandem structure. If we could relate this analogy to a real OLED device, it would be something like this. Red green blue OLED 3 stack structure has the same effect as building a three-story house on a cramped land to expand the actual area of use. By using the narrow land as it is. As a result, while maintaining the size of the red-green-blue subpixels, the light emitting area can be increased three times compared to the conventional OLED having a single stack structure. In general, it is known that injecting the same current into a device with twice the area reduces the current density by half and thus increases the lifetime by more than three times. Since the two-stack OLED device also has the characteristic of increasing the efficiency by 30% compared to the one-stack device, the actual lifespan is increased by four times. For this reason, Apple is planning to apply two-stack OLED to its iPad or MacBook from 2024. If so, what would be the result if a three-stack OLED with a three times wider emitting area was used? Perhaps compared to the existing one-stack OLED, the lifetime is expected to be at least six times instead of four times. Because compared to the two-stack, the three stack has a significant lifetime gain because the area is increased by 50% again. The question that naturally arises is, then, 
How about the lifespan of the three stack of the red green blue method compared to the existing three stack white OLED? Life expectancy is also expected to increase significantly. Let's see why. The picture on the left is the structure of three stack white OLED currently used in OLED TV production, and the right picture is the structure of the red green blue three stack, the topic of the day. If you look closely, the three stack white OLED on the left consists of a blue emitting unit on two layers and a unit containing both red and green on the other layer. In other words, it has the effect of increasing the emission area of blue color by two times, and there is no increase in the emission area of green and red. In conclusion, 3-stack white OLED is a device characterized in that the light emitting area of blue subpixel is doubled in the vertical direction of the device to enhance the durability of blue color. On the other hand, the red-green-blue 3-stack OLED on the right has the effect of increasing the area by three times for both red-green-blue subpixels. Compared to white OLED, the area of blue is increased by 50% and red and green are three times larger. Therefore, in terms of lifespan, it is bound to show a fairly large difference compared to 3-stack white OLED. Besides the longevity, red-green-blue 3-stack has another big advantage over 3-stack white OLED. A 3-stack white OLED uses a color filter to filter out the red-green-blue color, whereas a red-green-blue 3-stack does not need to. Let's compare the efficiency of 1-stack red-green-blue type, 3-stack red-green-blue, and 3-stack white OLED commonly used for mobile phones. The 3-stack white OLED, which uses a color filter to filter two-thirds of the light to obtain a red-green-blue color, has a superior lifespan compared to the red-green-blue type, but the efficiency is only about 60%. Therefore, 3-stack white OLED cannot be used for portable devices that use batteries. However, it is known that when the number of stacks is increased from 1 to 2 in the red-green-blue type OLED having such high efficiency to produce a 2-stack red-green-blue, the efficiency increases by about 30% again. In addition to the effect of increasing the lifespan, this is why Apple is trying to adopt 2-stack in its devices in earnest from 2024. 3-stack red-green-blue color also shows similar efficiency to 2-stack red-green-blue color. Therefore, the efficiency of 3-stack red-green-blue OLED can be more than doubled compared to 3-stack white OLED, and the lifespan is also significantly increased. It is a huge difference in efficiency, and in particular, since it is a top emission type unlike white OLED, a relatively high aperture ratio can also be secured, and the aperture ratio difference becomes a factor that further differentiates the lifespan and efficiency. In other words, it can be said that the difference between the lifespan and the efficiency mentioned above is a very conservative figure. However, the reason why this excellent method cannot be used for OLED TV is that it has to use a process that is three times longer than that of red-green-blue one stack. A bigger problem is that, as discussed in the previous video, the equipment that produces the red-green-blue method uses relatively small sixth-generation equipment due to technical problems. Is there any possibility to apply this monster grade 3 stack red green blue type to OLED TV? In addition to the best efficiency, it is the king of the OLED world that can greatly improve the brightness and the lifetime to the extent that burn in worries are almost eliminated. Of course, that possibility is open. Now, let's take a look at that possibility. First, it is an equipment issue. It is nonsense to produce TVs over 55 inch with 6th generation equipment that has been used to produce OLED panels for small mobile phones. Therefore, there is a possibility of producing 3 stack red green blue only if there is equipment of 8.5 th generation or higher that is producing white OLED TV. And as was known in the recent announcement, OLED panel makers seem to have almost completed the development of 8.5 th generation equipment using fine metal masks. In particular, Samsung is at the forefront in this area and is expected to use this equipment to produce the two-stack OLED that Apple so longs for. Therefore, the bottleneck associated with the equipment has been resolved. The remaining bottleneck is a long, long three-stack process. As mentioned before, the two-stack process is about to be adopted for Apple's iPad or MacBook, but adding another stack further from there is a burden for TV panels with relatively low added value. Here's how to fix this, the way is to use a hybrid stack. If only the shortest blue stack uses 3 stack, the longest lived color uses 1 stack, and the medium life color uses 2 stack, 
the total number of layers of organic matter is red green blue 2 stack it will be the same as the device. As such, it is possible to maintain most of the monster class performance while reducing the burden on the process. This is because there is no reason to stack multiple layers of colors that have already secured a sufficient lifespan. Rather, it would be more correct to set the life balance of each color equally. We wrap up today's video while looking forward to the advent of these monster-grade OLED TVs in the not-too-distant future. Goodbye.